Rolle's theorem and the mean value theorem, both really, really important and very closely related. Let's look at Rolle's theorem first. It says let f be continuous on the closed interval a to b. So let's start with a right there and b right there. And it's differentiable on the open interval a to b. And f of a has to equal f of b. So here we go. I'm going to draw a continuous function where f of a equals f of b. OK? So there's f of a. And that equals f of b. And it's continuous and it's differentiable. If all those conditions are met, then there is at least one number c in the interval a to b such that f prime of c equals 0. So the derivative gives us a slope. So it's saying that the slope of this curve equals 0, which means that the tangent line is going to be horizontal. So in other words, just eyeballing it, I'm going to say that c is right there. And bingo, we've got a tangent line that's horizontal, which means that the derivative of f at c equals 0. We're guaranteed for that to happen at least one horizontal tangent line if the function's continuous, differentiable, and f of a equals f of b. So on this problem, we're supposed to determine whether Rolle's theorem can be applied to f on the closed interval a to b. If it can be applied, find all values of c in the open interval a to b such that f prime of c equals 0. OK, is it continuous? Well, it's continuous everywhere except x equals negative 2. But that's OK because our interval goes from negative 1 to 3. And over that interval, it is continuous. Does f of a equal f of b? Let's see what f of negative 1 is. That will equal 1 plus 2 minus 3 over 1. And I get 0. OK, how about f of 3? That will equal 9 minus 6 minus 3 over 5, which is also equal to 0. So yes, f of a equals f of b. It's continuous and differentiable over that interval. So here we go. f prime of c is supposed to equal 0. To get f prime of c, we need to get f prime of x. So f prime of x, we're going to do the quotient rule, 2x minus 2 times x plus 2 minus x squared minus 2x minus 3 times the derivative of the denominator all over the denominator squared. And that's going to give us 2x squared, 2x squared, and then 4x minus 2x. minus an x squared plus 2x plus 3. OK, so I've got a 2x squared minus x squared. That's a 1x squared. A 2x plus 2x, that's a 4x. A negative 4 plus 3 minus 1 over x plus 2 squared. So if I want this whole thing to be equal to 0, I just have to worry about the numerator. And if we apply the quadratic formula, x is going to equal negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, which is going to be negative 4 plus or minus 2 root 5 over 2, which is negative 2 plus or minus root 5. But remember that c must be in the interval 
from negative 1 to 3, and negative 2 minus root 5 is outside that interval, so c is equal to negative 2 plus root 5. So at that x value, we are guaranteed to have a horizontal tangent. So let's take a look at the mean value theorem. Now the mean value theorem starts out just like Rolle's theorem. It says if f is continuous on the closed interval from a to b and is differentiable on the open interval a to b, then there exists a number c in a and b. Okay, so far so good, just like Rolle's theorem, such that f prime of c is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So we don't have to have f of a equal to f of b to use the mean value theorem. Here's what it says geometrically. There's a, there's b. I've got some function that's continuous and differentiable. Okay, so here's f of a and here's f of b. So if I do f of b minus f of a over b minus a, what I'm actually doing is taking the slope of the line, the secant line that connects those two points change in y over change in x. And what we're saying is somewhere in that interval from a to b, there exists a point c such that the tangent line is parallel. It has the same slope as the secant line that connects those two points at A and at B. That's all the mean value theorem says. Now in terms of uh, rates, what we're saying is that the instantaneous rate of change, the slope of the tangent, is equal to the average rate of change, the slope of the secant. Instantaneous equals average. So let's determine whether the mean value theorem can be applied to F on the closed interval A to B. If it can be applied, find all values of c in the open interval a to b, such that f prime of c equals f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So here's our function. All right, so let's rewrite that as x cubed minus x squared minus 2x. f of 1 is going to be 1 minus 1 minus 2, which is negative 2 f of negative 1 is going to be negative 1 minus 1 plus 2, which is 0. So f of 1 minus, whoop, minus f of negative 1 over 1 minus negative 1 is going to equal negative 2 minus 0 over 2, which is negative 1. That has to equal f prime of c. Well, f prime of x is going to be 3x squared minus 2x minus 2. We set that equal to negative 1, and we solve for x. And those will be our c values. So I'm going to get 0 equals 3x squared minus 2x. I'm going to add 1 to both sides. I get minus 1. Mm, let's see, I think that'll factor. I want to get a negative 2 in there, so I'm going to multiply that 3x by negative 1. Do a plus 1. So x equals negative 1 third and positive 1. So, what do we choose? Well, notice that c has to be in the open interval, so we have to toss out 1. And negative 1 third is in this interval, so we get that c equals negative 1 
third. Okay, so real quick. A car is going down the highway and it's clocked by a patrol car going 68 miles per hour in a 70 mile per hour zone. Five minutes later, the same car passes another patrol car seven miles down the highway. Its speed at that point is 70 miles per hour. Did the car exceed the speed limit at any point between the two patrol cars? We're going to assume that the velocity of the car was continuous and so it's differentiable. And that means that the instantaneous velocity at any point along this seven mile trip is going to equal the average velocity. So let's see what the average velocity of this car is. Okay, well, we know that it took five minutes to go seven miles. So that's seven miles over one twelfth of an hour, which is seven times twelve miles per hour, guess what? That's 84 miles per hour. So somewhere in that seven mile stretch, the car definitely was exceeding the speed limit.